morning. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of all the members and friends, we welcome you to our worship service for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And today is our final sensational summer celebration as we celebrate Bible times. The activities will be mostly inside, but there will be tables outside for eating. And information for today is on this paper in the narthex, just so you know. Keep in mind that next Sunday is Communion Sunday, and we will also have a blessing of the backpacks and bags and my wallet. <laughs> a reminder that Cub Scout Welcome Night will be Thursday, September the 8th, from 6.30 to 7.30, and don't forget the family movie night on September the 4th. And now Dorothy Ramsey has an announcement. Good morning. As Pastor Emma announced in her latest newsletter, the deacons are inviting you to a celebration of our fellowship in the Lord. The Fall Fellowship Kickoff, formerly known as Picnic, will be held on September 11th on the church lawn and in the lounge after the Sunday service. We will provide the main course. Please sign up in the hallway with the number we can expect from your family and friends so that we will know how much we need to buy. Also, if you will bring aside dessert or beverage, please mark that down too. Hope to see you there. And now for the call to worship. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Dorothy. Birthdays for this week. August the 28th, that's today. Jason Peach's birthday. Jason's way in the back. Good to see you, Jason. Good to see you. August 29th is Lynn Haas' birthday. September 1st is my son-in-law's birthday, Jonas Nicholson. Uh, Kathy Mann's birthday is September the 3rd. Wes Garrett, and he's up there, I think, and Janet Gender, she's down here, have birthdays on September the 4th. And last week, Carice St. Fleur turned seven on Thursday. Where is Carice? Raise your hand. She's right behind Larry. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Prayer concerns, well, tomorrow is the big day. Pray for the teachers, students, and support staff as school begins. Also, friends, continue to pray for Dina Neville's aunt. Pray for Denise Fable Lowther for rapid recovery from COVID. Pray for Denise, Dina Neville's father-in-law. Pray for Mary Studham, Karen Studham Satoris, Denise Barkas, and Karen Floor. And now joys. Dorothy just told me that her son is over COVID. That's a joy. 
And I have a joy. My beard turned black overnight. What a joy that was. Let's now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship. It's taken from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Please remain standing for our first hymn, number 592, Lord, you give the great commission.
You may be seated, but you're already there. <laughs> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. <clears throat> God of grace and love, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. Nor do we love our neighbor as ourselves. You call on us to bear one another's burdens, but we pass by suffering and need out of fear or busyness or preoccupation. We are too ashamed or too proud to admit our need for help in hearing our own errors. Open our hearts and our arms to those who struggle with the pain and grief of life. Forgive us our failings and restore us to your service. In Christ's name, amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, each one of us has received forgiveness and healing mercies. We are now given opportunities to offer forgiveness and redemption to one another. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. young at heart online and here and wow that's loud good morning wake up everybody oh perfect 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 we're here today we're here today wonderful don't even sit down i need your help this morning all right can you stand for me i need three children do i have three children one two are you a kid? Okay, perfect. We are prepared today. All right, my friends, if you could stand in front of me, I'm going to give you each a job to do. Are you ready? All right. So, Mr. Elliot, your name is Oscar the Oyster today. What I need you to do is when I tap you on the shoulder, I need you to make a really squeaky noise as you open up your shell. Can you do that? I can. Let me hear the sound. All right, that'll squeak. Okay. Not sure if that's going on over the internet, but that might be for the better. All right, John. Your name is Sam, the Grand of Sand. Are you ready? When I tap you, I'm going to actually separate you a little. I don't know why. I think that might be useful. Um, I'm going to tap you on the shoulder, and you're going to say, in your best, most irritating voice. I'm irritating. Are you ready? Yeah. Can you do it? Yeah. How irritating can you be? Let's, all right, let's give it a try. Blah. Blah. No, just say I'm irritating. That's all you need to say. It, it will be part of the story. No worries. Can you do it? No. No? Okay, should we get Miss Sarah to do it with you? No. We'll be sand together. All right, we'll be sand together. All right, and you are going to be our Stephen minister for the day, and your job is to put your hands up to your ears and say, I'm listening. You're listening. All right. So our story for today involves Oscar, Sam,
Sam and Sally are shrimp, the Stephen minister. Long ago, there were things that were more precious than diamonds and rubies and emeralds. Do you know that? Pearls. Well, well you, the, the oyster might give it away. All right. Well, let's start our story. Oscar, our friend, is in the ocean bottom, and he is enjoying things as they move through. He opens his shell and is enjoying the world. Things are swimming by. He's enjoying his life. And our friend Sam, the bit of sand, I'm comes and makes it into his shell. He's really... I'm it, it really starts to bother our friend Oscar. He tries to open his shell, and he tries to make the sand go away, but it just doesn't help at all. So he turns to his friend Sally the shrimp. Right? You're listening. Who listens to Oscar as he's trying to work with this sand. But somehow that sand... It's just, it's, it's really itchy and scratchy, like when you get it in your swim trunks. And, and Oscar starts to wiggle a little, right? He's trying to make it come out of his shell, and it's just not working. Sally says she's, she's listening. She's listening to her friend, and eventually they come up with a plan. Sam keeps working. But eventually, what Oscar is able to do is he's able to produce a pearl. And now you're not so irritating. You've got a nice coating. He's got you coated, and the, the problem that he had isn't quite as much of a problem. But Sally keeps... Right, she keeps listening, right? She keeps listening as Oscar's working, and that pearl gets bigger and bigger. Sometimes, though, we don't just have one thing that bothers us. We end up with a whole precious strand of items that have bothered us in life. And so the Sallies of the world, they are there to keep listening to, to Oscar, right? And sometimes, can you hold that for me? There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Sometimes, when we put in our pearls, right, put them in, and they still kind of make noise in life. They still, you can still hear them. Sally keeps busy listening, right? Oscar keeps busy trying to coat the pearl. Sally keeps busy listening. More Sams come along sometimes. That's how life works. But if we keep listening and we keep trying to make the best, the pearls, out of our bad situation, sometimes our pearls turn into something a little magic. A little bit of love that we get to share across the whole world. All right. Thank you, my Sally, my Oscar. And my Sam. Thank you very much. Oh, here, my lemon. Can we pray before we go back to the seats? I was so excited about what a great job you were doing. I almost forgot entirely. Hmm? We're just going to pray standing, and then we'll go back to our seats. Two more seconds. Wait, I can only pray for two seconds? Oh, okay. But they'll only be here for two seconds. Heavenly Father, thank you that we have friends who listen, who want to come alongside of us when the irritations of the world bother us. And so you've given us these opportunities to deal with them. They keep coming along and make something beautiful out of them, both because we're interested in making the best of the bad situation and because our friends are willing to listen and be with us through that. Let us be those for other people. Um, let us have those opportunities and recognize them as blessings from you this week. Amen. Thank you, friends. Oh, well, thank you.
the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture we read until read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, which can be found on page 123 in the New Testament section of your Pew Bible. Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the 12 called together the whole community of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from you, from you among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Procuus, Nicanor, Timon, Paramas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 40, which can be found on page 29 of the New Testament portion of your pew Bible. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. The Stephen ministers would like to thank Pastor Emma 
and the session for allowing us to serve in worship this morning. We've had a Stephen ministry program here at Herondale Presbyterian Church since 1996. We often think that because we've been around so long, everyone knows all about the program. But that isn't necessarily the case. Hopefully our presentation this morning will be helpful in bringing a clearer understanding. Stephen ministry is not something that just happens here. As a Stephen ministry congregation, we are part of something really big. Dr. Kenneth Houck, a pastor and clinical psychologist, developed Stephen ministry in 1975 when he began to tra train lay people to help him provide quality Christian care to members of his congregation. The program was so successful that other congregations became interested and Dr. Hout founded the nonprofit Stephen Ministry. Today, thousands of congregations of all types, sizes, and denominations are using Stephen Ministry. It works for such diverse situations because all congregations, including ours, have two common characteristics. First, there are people who are hurting and would benefit from one-to-one -one Christ centered care. Many more people than pastors alone can care for. Second, there are lay people with the gifts and potential to provide that care if they are trained and empowered to do so. Stephen Ministry brings those two groups together in a powerful way. If you haven't already, I would invite you to pick up one of the flyers on gold paper in the narthex entitled Stephen Ministers, the After People. It may help you understand some of the situations where Stephen Ministry can be helpful. Most people are much more open to giving care than to receiving it. When a person is giving care, he or she is in a position of strength, stability, and authority. When a person is receiving care, he or she is acknowledging weakness, insecurity, and vulnerability. As a result, there are many people today who, though they really could benefit from a Christian friend who would listen and care for them, instead tough it out on their own. They remain the strong, silent type, or wear a smile across a face that is hiding back a flood of tears. Our society encourages this, particularly for men. To ask for help is to admit weakness. To show weakness is to admit inferiority. But God did not create us to be independent. We were created to be interdependent. God's word is clear on this all the way back to Genesis. It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him in Genesis 2.18. The New Testament underscores this theme with more than 50 verses that contain the words one another. These verses include admon admonitions such as love one another, encourage one another, build up one another, and pray for one another. What these verses don't say is that we are only to love, encourage, build up, and pray for other people. The one another wording gives them a reciprocal meaning. It also tells us that we are to allow other people to love, encourage, build up, and pray for us. It is most difficult for people to ask for help, whether it's because of guilt, shame, feelings of inadequacy, or fear of rejection. Many would prefer to suffer alone than to ask for help. But suffering alone is not God's intent for us. Jesus promises, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11:28. We can receive this promised rest when we turn to one another for comfort and help. Our Stephen ministers know how hard it is to ask for care. They know how to respond in a loving, caring, and non-judgmental manner. They are equipped, ready, and waiting to provide the comfort and care that God very much wants you to have. They will never reveal what you tell them. If you find yourself now or in the future facing difficulties in life, don't think you have to remain strong and suffer alone. Take the courageous step of seeking help. 
open your heart to receiving God's love and grace through another person. You can request Stephen Ministry Care by contacting Pastor Emma in the church office or calling Janet Lloyd or one of the other Stephen ministers that are listed in your bulletin. Our Stephen ministry offers the opportunity of a very confidential relationship with someone who will listen to you and provide you with the care and encouragement you need, while Christ works inside to provide you with the care and encouragement you need. Uh, Stephen ministers receive 50 hours of training before they are commissioned to provide care. They also get ongoing support through regular meetings with Stephen leaders and other Stephen ministers. These meetings offer encouragement and advice for the caring relationships while maintaining confidentiality about those who are receiving care. This morning we will share with you a couple of short video clips from people who have found healing through Stephen ministry as well as the stories of some people who found enrichment for their lives by becoming Stephen ministers. The first part of our presentation will be a short skit. Let me set the scene. Last week after church, Daisy approached Pastor Emma about needing some help, dealing with all the stress in her life right now. After listening carefully to Daisy's concerns, Pastor Emma suggested a referral to Stephen ministry and Daisy agreed. Pastor Emma immediately reached out to Janet Lloyd, our Stephen Ministry Referrals Coordinator. Janet contacted Daisy and then assigned Michelle to be her Stephen Minister. Let's join them now as Michelle makes her first phone call to Daisy. Hi Daisy, this is Michelle. I received a call from Janet saying you would like a Stephen minister. I'm calling you to introduce myself and to get to know what your needs are. Knowing that you've already reached out tells me what courage you have and how much you trust God's direction. I feel so embarrassed and overwhelmed. I don't know where to turn. I'm going through a messy divorce after 20 years of marriage. And I have several medical issues that are scary. I've just lost my job, so I have financial worries. On top of that, I have family issues. I feel lost and lonely. I'm so glad that you reached out. This is a formal relationship between us. All that you tell me will be confidential. Let's meet face to face once a week. I'm available by phone in between our meetings. I cannot fix what you're going through, but God can. I will gladly walk with you through this journey. I will listen with caring and compassion. I will pray with you and for you while God heals your pain. Okay, I'll try. Let's set up when and where we will meet. announced that she would be leaving our marriage and would be filing for divorce. And I had, I had no one to turn to. Everybody uh, was in shock as I was uh, a couple days after this announcement. And as I sat in a pew by myself with a, a church full of people, uh, the one slide that I had seen a thousand times before 
uh, came up, and that was the slide about Stephen Ministry. That morning, for me, for some reason, it was like it was speaking right at me. I think what my Stephen Minister Larry helped me with the most uh, was a, a consistent, uh, persistent effort on um, being there and showing up. Uh, Larry wa walked with me for literally the next two years through a very painful separation, through the divorce filing, uh, through the divorce. Larry refused. Um, uh, Larry refused to give up on me. And in a little over two years' time of meeting at, uh, I'm sorry, uh, at uh, 8 a.m., he would show up and be there for me. And so I think, you know, he did a tremendous job uh, in just making sure that that hour or so we were together, uh, he was completely devoted to, to just listening to me. Uh, and, and he would not speak a whole lot, as I recall, uh, but would just ask questions or, or would put things out, you know, for discussion or, and, and would just let me ramble, uh, which I can do. And, and he was everything I ever thought a loving God would be uh, by always being open, uh, by always being honest. Besides himself, uh, you know, God was there. Uh, standing right next to me, all I needed to do was was reach out for him, uh, and just as Larry would be there as we prayed, you know, uh, God and, and Jesus Christ were there, and my Stephen minister was every aspect of Jesus Christ to me, uh, and is to this day. The Stephen minister and the Stephen ministry program have changed my life. Uh, they have enabled me to commit myself. Uh, to bettering my own life. Um, the Stephen Ministry program and my Stephen Ministry in particular uh, have shown me that God does care and that, that God's shoulders are broad and it's okay to be mad at God and that, that God can take it. And the Stephen Minister and his role in that was to let that come out so that I could get it out and then be open to the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And the Stephen Minister and the Stephen Ministry program not only saved my life, but changed my life. And I'll forever be grateful to having had a Stephen Minister. Virginia Snyder is a Stephen minister from Michigan. I'll be reading Virginia's story of her relationship with her care receiver through Virginia's voice. Virginia writes, My care receiver was a young mother dying of leukemia. As I stepped up to her door, I summoned up courage and prayed that my words would come from God. Heather Swanson welcomed me into her house. During that first visit, we simply got to know each other. She and her husband had two small daughters. The subject of her illness never came up. Finally, we had a prayer. I left, promising to return. She said, thank you so much. It's good to talk with somebody. On my next visit, the subject of her illness came up. Her hand resting on her daughter's dowel carriage, she pushed it back and forth and said, with chemotherapy and all, I worry how I will look. What will Bill and the kids think? I assured her that she would be beautiful to those who loved her. Then she broke down sobbing but who will raise my girls? She laughed a little, saying, Bill can't even boil water. On our third visit, Heather's deepest concern surfaced. I walked up to her door, praying God would be with me. How much I needed God became evident 
as Heather stood staring out the picture window of her sun-filled living room. She said, I think I've lost faith in God. He isn't there for me anymore. Why? She angrily closed the drapes and slumped in the chair saying, Why? Why? I had no answer as she stared at me. Then it came, but not from me. Heather, I said softly, just because you've closed the drapes doesn't mean the sun is, isn't still out there. She regarded me for a long moment and then slowly began to smile. Yes, I see. In searching for strength, we turned to the Bible which became our companion and guide. In the Bible, Heather found she was not alone in feeling abandoned by God. Even Jesus, when he hung on the cross, cried out, My God, why did you abandon me? I admitted how difficult it was to hold on to my faith when things went wrong. But God does give us peace if we trust him. Through the months that followed, Heather seemed to gain new tranquility. For my part, I found my own spirituality deepening. Our meetings expanded to two or three times a week and continued at the hospital. As I sat by Heather's bed, her thin hand took mine. She looked at me through eyes of calm and peace. I'm ready and able to face whatever comes. I'm happy with the life God has given me. I have God's peace now and know Jesus is with me and will give me the strength I need. Thank you, Virginia, for being my friend. After having had a student minister, my life is unbelievably different. It's, I think the biggest way it's different is that I feel connected with God in a way that I never felt before. And I, I really felt like, you know, I was doing well, but I didn't realize what a barrier my issues were. Because, partially because I had, I didn't want to share them with another person. And not only did I not want to share them with another person, I didn't, I guess I didn't want to share them with God. Even if you know intellectually that God is there, sometimes it feels like it doesn't matter because there's no one there to help you. And I think Stephen Ministry is a way to actually see help right in front of you. And so seeing, receiving care from her began the process of me being able to receive care from God. So to have that one person who had signed on to listen and not to judge me, it felt safer um, than burdening friends who could run, you know, it might be too much, or family members who might feel guilty that it was their fault. So my Stephen minister, she's just such a sweet lady. <laughs> she's so sweet uh, and she's, she's extremely caring and everything seems to sort of get calm. When, when she speaks, because I think there's a lot of love in her voice, in our interactions, there's a lot of love there. When I felt like maybe God couldn't do something in my situation, she reminded me that he could. And when I felt unlovable and that maybe God was powerful enough, but I was too weak, she kept believing. So. At least one of us had faith, even though a lot of times it wasn't me. There was always faith for my situation present there. Stephen ministry to me means not having to be alone. I don't think I really knew how to trust people before Stephen ministry. So that was an opportunity to learn that. I know what I was like before, 
and I know what I'm like after, and I know there was Stephen ministry in between, and so I know that made a difference. It made a huge difference. From hearing about Stephen ministry over the years, you have probably formed some ideas about what sort of person would make a good Stephen minister. What would you say about a cigar-smoking, straight-talking motorcycle rider who admittedly was just not into emotional stuff? Maybe not. Tell me, let me tell you about Steve. Steve was a retired naval officer who fit all of the above. In his position with the Navy, he had people come to him with problems, and it was his job to fix them. So feelings weren't his concern. His approach was just, tell me the facts so I can fix the problem and get on to the next one. One Sunday in church, the Stephen ministers announced that they would be starting a new training class and were inviting people to consider being a part of this ministry. Steve thought it sounded interesting, but doubted he would fit. On his way out, he picked up some information. After he read it, he just stuffed it in a drawer. But the Holy Spirit kept nudging him until he finally gave in and filled out the application. Much to his surprise, he was accepted. So he sort of looked up and said, Okay, Lord, if you think something like this can really work with me, I'm going to, be, going to do it, and I'm going to give it a go. Steve dedicated himself to the training and learned a lot. He discovered that you can learn to listen. You can learn about feelings. You can learn to be a good caregiver. He learned that God is the cure giver. The Stephen minister's job is to listen and care. Really try to understand what the person is going through and leave the fixing up to God. So what is Steve's message to someone who is considering Stephen ministry? He says, if you think God is calling you to this ministry, if you even have an inkling that you might want to be a Stephen minister, give it a shot. The training is fantastic. It took an old nub like me, rounded off the edges, and taught me how to relate in a more caring way. You're going to be very well trained, and you'll have the Lord right there shoulder to shoulder with you. And if you're like me, and you're not a real touchy-feely person, you can still be a good Stephen minister. You just need to be willing to listen with the heart of Jesus to someone who is going through a tough time. Being a Stephen minister has allowed me to serve the Lord in ways I never imagined I could. So if you're interested in looking into Stephen ministry here at Herondale, contact Pastor Emma or a Stephen minister for information on the training we are planning next year. Please rise in body or spirit as we declare what we believe. maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and set it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Let's see some judge now to quicken the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of life, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Gracious God, take and use these gifts given so graciously to spread your word and love throughout the whole world. Amen. Let us take a few moments now to lift our hearts in prayer, sharing with God the concerns that are heavy on our hearts. Let us pray. God of love, mercy, and hope, your love makes possible the impossible. When we are facing seemingly impossible situations, remind us of your love and the possibilities it proclaims. Amen. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit to sing the closing hymn.
standing for the benediction. Thankful and grateful. Today, Lord, we are thankful for all our Stevens ministers throughout this church and in our community who go out and do wonderful work. And Lord, today we are grateful for Herondale for providing the education and the continuing training for the Stevens ministers, and then for mentoring and supporting them throughout their journey as caregivers. So this, this week, everybody, please go forth in your communities by doing good deeds for others and continue to spread kindness throughout. And may your week be full of joy, peace, and most of all, God's everlasting love. Amen. Please be seated.